We've got a great show lined up for you and fantastic to have both Gautam Gambhir and Matty Hayden in the house with us. Great to have you here, Gauthi. Great to have you here, Matty. Pleasure's mine. You know, Gautam, with no one watching, you'd sort of expect MS Dhoni to take it easy a bit, to relax a little as well. But in the preseason camp, he seemed more determined than ever. Are we going to see the most lethal MS Dhoni perhaps in this Dream 11 IPL? Depends. I think he's been away from the game for last one year. And it's not going to be easy because IPL is proper cricket tournament. It's, uh, the quality of cricket is really up there right up there and uh, when, he, when you face international quality bowlers, it's not going to be that easy. So obviously, I'm sure that when you haven't played enough cricket for last one year, you want to get you want to get back to your best rhythm and you want to try and practice as much as you can. Hey Ross, you've seen the man from close quarters. He's coming back to the game after 14 months away. Do you see this being a bit of a hindrance to him? Do you see any rustiness? What can we expect from MS Dhoni in this IPL? I think just when MS Dhoni turns up is always what um, is surprising as all of those things, both as when I played with him, you know, he'll never forget, you know, his in innings up in Dharam Charlotte, for example, the year that we, you know, went took the took to the final down at, um, um, uh, in Mumbai against Mumbai Indians. I mean, he, he smashed, I think, 26 or something, you know, the last couple of overs, he was just amazing. So good to be able to just even just let your mind dream as we're not even into the tournament and start to think about those moments when, you know, MS Dhoni, either in the future in this tournament or in the past, has just you know, put a little bit of icing and spread it all over the CSK's cake um, to get up in moments where no one really, you know, would even dare to sort of win games. And MS, from those positions, tends to do that. It's magic stuff to watch. Got the obviously plenty of adjustments to be made within the, the bio bubble, which is the big word at the moment as well for all the teams. What do you think is the hardest restriction for the players and for the management too? Just to be in one room and can't go out. You've been uh, with the family, you've been with the family members for the last five or six months and suddenly now you're all alone and you've got to be very restrictive as well. Obviously, no doubt when the entire country was in the lockdown, but at least you were with your loved ones as well. So this has got to be difficult. And plus, obviously, when you go on a tour, there is that itch where you want to start practicing straight away as well. But going into quarantine for seven or eight days can be really tough as well. Sometimes it can play on your mind as well. You want to just go out there, hit some balls, take some catches, play around and all that stuff. But since till the time you don't go into that net practice and you don't go into that uh, practice mode or match mode, uh, it gets really, really difficult. So I'm sure I think some of the people will have to be really, really restricted. Perhaps this is a blessing in disguise for all the players to get together, stay close as one tight unit. What's the most you've had in terms of time with your players before the IPL? Yeah, this could be a blessing in disguise. But again, I think uh, you will not have the entire squad. The English players won't be there. The Australian players won't be there till probably, what, one or two days before the start of the tournament. But again, you want to have the entire squad. But it's always fun. When you're about around your teammates, you can have fun. You can play around, especially when you hit the ground. Uh, there are so many other activities you can do. So it just takes your mind off uh, for whatever has happened in the last four or five months. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of families would not be traveling as well. So when you, have, when you don't have family, especially when there was IPL in India, your family would be there, your wife would be there. There, your kids would be there but this time around it is only your teammates so which has got to be a huge plus as well and when you're young you want to try and know as many people as you can you want to get into the mindset of a lot of players who've been really really experienced so this is idle time for a lot of these young cricketers to get into the mindset of people like Roy Sharma, MS Dhoni, Virat Kohli this is perfect time because this opportunity they will not get in the next IPL. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, MS Dhoni. Rohit actually mentioned how injuries could play a part given the heat in the UAE. How much of a factor do you think those conditions are on players in a tournament like this? I don't think so. It makes a huge difference because obviously the only difference is that the uh, players haven't played uh, cricket for the last five or six months. Uh, see, when you were playing IPL, look at the conditions in K. Uh, at Cal in Calcutta or in Chennai or for that matter even in Mumbai all those conditions have been very very humid so it's not going to be any difference but yes obviously because you're rusty your body hasn't hasn't been used to the same pressure and the same physical stress as well what your body anyways is used to when you're playing international cricket consistently so that is one area yes probably I would have to agree with Rohit that your players can get injured unless and until they're absolutely 100% ready to go the most important thing is that UAE in April is completely different to UAE in September it's going to be much better than what it was in 2014. Because that is probably the peak of summer as well. Yes, it could be humid, but things will get better in September, October, uh, the moment it keeps going towards uh, end of the year. So the most important thing is how you approach the practice sessions for everyone in all the three departments as well. 
Now, Maddie, we've seen some massive, monstrous sixes off your bat in the past as well. How do you think the pitchers will behave in the UAE? Will we get to see these big hits this time around too? Yeah, this is a big question around what pitchers, um, not only the types of pitchers that are going to be in the UAE, how different they are to India, but also how they'll take the wear and tear. Clearly, um, even if they've got quite substantial uh, squares, which um, some of them do, um, they're going to get tired. Um, you know, and I think it's not the only people that are going to be tired as well. It's going to be a tiredness just from, from you know, the, the bowling units themselves as well in, in hot conditions. Um, but I, I think, you know, more than anything, you know, just having those, these pitches that, um, you know, will gradually just wear and, and, and will break down over time uh, you may see almost a tournament in two halves, you know, where you get you know, a little bit more um, conducive to, to the seamers early. Um, and then at the back end, you know, sides that have, like CSK, for example, that have got an abundance of, of spin bowling options may well come into their own in the back half of the tournament as well. Is this setting the tone perhaps for the IPL too, Gauthi? Are we expecting low and slow wickets through in the UAE? I don't. I, I expect flat wickets I expect wickets which is going to give a lot, which is going to be really really friendly for batters because there hasn't been any cricket which has happened in UAE since last six or seven months so obviously before that Pakistan used to play a lot of international cases, cricket so wickets used to be tired wicket used to be dry as well again UAE has three uh, three international grounds so this time around in UAE I feel that it's going to be a, it's going to be flat wickets good for batters yeah, Hados, you know, Gotham just talked about how he thinks it could be flat track suiting the batsmen in the UAE. Are you of the same opinion? What kind of bowlers do you think could suit conditions in the UAE this time around? And also, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who are the top three bowlers that you think could have a massive impact at this IPL? Yeah, look, I think the experienced um, seam bowlers, um, you know, will always you know, be a threat. Bhuvanesh Kumar, obviously, um, you know, has been very incredible during the IPL. Uh, and all the IPLs um, from Mumbai Indians' um, point of view, um, you know, who, who can pop, who can go past, you know, um, one of the finest bowlers, you know, in world cricket, and that's Jasper Bumrah. I um, think he's, you know, again, like in line with, you know, anyone that can play as, on their day as good as anyone. Um, and then I think you've got a handful of spinners as well that, you know, can really, you know, look to dominate dominate the play, even the old boys, you know, that, that can do a job. You know, I'm thinking of guys um, like Harbhajan and Singh, you know, who, who didn't play a lot of cricket last year, but, you know, still wildly old off spinner that can have a go. Um, Jadeja, you know, from um, CSK. Uh, some of the leggies as well, um, you know, I've got a big, big chance, um, you know, to really get amongst it again this year. What does surprise us is to see a fast bowler pick up 600 test wickets. Jimmy Anderson became the first name among the Pacers to get to the mark. And what a remarkable achievement that is. Unbelievable in the recently concluded test series versus Pakistan. Hados, you've played a lot of cricket against this man with some great battles. Where do you rate him among the greats of the game? His mindset and, and his ability to be able to bowl you know, long periods of time over sustained periods of time as well, years, um, has been remarkable and a true testimony to his courage and, and determination. Um, both required, you know, when you're looking at numbers, you know, even close to, you know, the legendary numbers that, that Jimmy has. Now, Gotham, 600 test wickets, first fast bowler to get there. Jimmy Anderson really has put his name amongst the greats. How great a fast bowler is he in your ranks in terms of overall in the history of the game? Unbelievable achievement and I don't think so anyone expected any fast bowler to go and get 600 wickets and probably he could be again the number one to uh, go to 700 wickets as well. Look at his rhythm and the way he performs uh, and the way he bowls those spells and the way and the speeds at which he bowls the spell 138, 137 and yes uh, initially people spoke a lot about him being in a, a conditional bowler. He can only do well in uh, England English conditions but uh, He's proved in every situation, every condition possible. He, he proved himself in subcontinent, in Australia, everywhere. So probably he'll... I don't think so any other fast bowler in the future will end up getting more than uh, 600 wickets. He's probably the greatest uh, for me and he will... He's probably the only one who I feel can even touch 700. 